It's now time to take a look into League One and take a look into some teams who have finally got themselves off the mark. Some teams who are showing promise well beyond where I believe they would be and some teams who haven't quite hit the mark yet. And that's something which we're going to address in this video. Make sure you check out the description for the video you want to watch, the type of review, the team you want to look into. But make sure while you're down there, you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Let me know your thoughts on your team's game down in the comments. Give me more of an overview. Give me more of an overview of how you felt your team performed this weekend and let me know your thoughts on the upcoming games and how you think your season is going to go based on the opening three games of the season. Now, we start off looking at Charlton Athletic picking up a late 1-0 win versus Leighton Orient. Now, Leighton Orient have had a bit of a tough start to this campaign. A 1-0 win from Charlton Athletic here certainly has put the cat amongst the pigeons in Leighton Orient. Now, I think it's really good for Charlton Athletic and I'm not surprised by this result at all in the slightest. I'm also not surprised really that Charlton look to have sort of come out of the blocks at this point. Now, 56% possession to 44. It wasn't really sort of a game which came with domination. And you look at it and you can see that uh, Charlton were certainly uh, able to create more shooting opportunities or at least take more shots. 0.78 xG to 0.38. Were Leighton Orient really in this game? That's sort of a big question to ask. Charlton probably should have done a little bit more uh, to sort of so solidify their win. Now, if we go and look into sort of the two teams available, and I think you can't look past that midfield available to uh, to Charlton. And you look at Berry, you look at Connor Coventry, you look at Doherty, really, really good players in that midfield area. You look at... Gasana had me who they have up front, a really good striker at this level. And obviously, there is a bit of a talking point. I think it's from Sean Clare where he made a tackle. It was a bit, bit dangerous and it's one of those. We've seen a few of those uh, this season and we'll have to see, obviously, how they sort of go. Because I think... In a lot of the games this season, even the championship ones, I think the referees have been really lenient on fouls and uh, things like that. I think they're giving a, they're not giving a lot this season, and whether that's in a way to sort of let the games flow a bit more, I'm not entirely sure. But I certainly think the referees need to take a proper handle on the games. Now, if we look at the stats bet between the game, you can obviously see, and it goes back to my old point that I've made ever since I started making these videos. Get shots in the area. Get shots in the area. If you get it on target, you've got a better chance of scoring if you're in the 18-yard box. And I think that is completely obvious to everybody in this world. And you look at uh, Charlton here, they've probably got eight of their 11 shots in the box. And you then look at Leighton Orient, who only have three. And I think I do think that is something which makes a difference. You've got to be able to get into the box and create those opportunities. And it's something that Paul Warren is really good at getting his sides to do. And I refer back to Paul Warren, obviously, as a Derby County fan, because that is the reason why we went up last year. We got bodies in the box, we scored goals, and we were able to not let people get into our box. And this is obviously something which will obviously progress over the course of the season. Now, Leighton Orient had a really good year last year, and... Um, are they going to be able to replicate it? Probably not. I think there's a bit more quality in the division this year. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how they progress. Now, I said this was going to be sort of an interesting one for Peedsborough. And they really needed to get a result in this one. And they did a 4-1 thrashing of Shrewsbury Town. But they didn't do it the easy way. They went 1-0 they went down in the 21st minute with Winchester picking up the goal. But Kwame Poku responded twice in the 23rd and the 58th minute before Randall popped up in the 87th and 88th to secure the victory for the posh. Now, I do feel as if Peterborough are sort of in that stage where they're sort of, they really are rebuilding what they've lost. And I think it's going to be an interesting season for them because obviously... I do think they'll be in the playoff picture, but will they really have a chance at going up? That's a question which is sort of going to have to sort of be asked sort of later down the line. But they certainly did dominate this one, 65% to 35%. And this is one of the reasons why I think uh, Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury are going to be down there this season, uh, sort of in that relegation battle, because they've got a lot to do. I just don't quite think that their squad is as good 
as they maybe believe it is. Now, you look at the XG, it's 0.56 to 3.06. 10 shots to 16. Five big chances for Peterborough to just one for Shrewsbury. Now, I do think that there's a lot going on with both of these teams. I think you obviously know that Shrewsbury aren't necessarily a competitive team when it comes to like Peterborough, but Peterborough have lost some massive, massive quality this summer with the likes of Harrison Burrows, Mason Clark, Ronnie Edwards leaving, and they really do seem to have found replacements as it stands at this point. Now, obviously, as the season goes on, we'll see if that is to be the case or if they have gone backwards, but this is a result which really sort of puts puts them back into the right position. Now, you even look at the bench and it's not necessarily as strong as it was last season and that's something which they're going to have to work with as well as uh, Paul Hurst is at Shrewsbury now we've obviously looked at some of the basic numbers but let's look a little bit more in depth 16 shots 11 on target clinical nature shots on target it's exactly what you want from a performance and then there's only four shots 10 total uh, four shots on target 10 total for Shrewsbury and Obviously, there's a long way for Shrewsbury to go before they're anywhere near the competitive level of Peterborough. But who knows what can happen over the course of a 46-game season. But I certainly think Shrewsbury are in for a bit of trouble this season. Blackpool continue their average start to the season as Stockport County show just why a lot of people have got them as potential challengers this upcoming campaign with uh, Berry, Favre and Olafor picking up the three goals in a 3-0 victory away from home. And it's really interesting looking at this. It really, really is because Stockport have certainly shown that they're going to have quality this year. And this was certainly a performance which showed that beating Blackpool, a team battling for those playoff places last year, is it's an impressive feat, especially doing it at home. Now, if we do look at the basic statistics, it's certainly not, the domination you'd anticipate. It's 54% to 46% in Stockport's favour uh, for possession. 0.88 to 0.52 for expected goals. 11 shots to 10 again in Stockport's favour. And you look at this Stockport side and you think, how are they able to take their chances so well? And I think a big thing about this Stockport squad is they've got a player called Louis Barry. And I really like Louis Barry and I think he's done really, really well at the start of this season. And even if you go back to last year, I think he did really well as well. And you look at uh, Lewis Bate, who they've picked up in midfield. I think he's a really, really good player. And I think he's going to develop into a, a top-end League One, maybe championship, uh, mid-table championship player over the course of his career. Um, and it for me, they've just recruited really, really well. I think Diamond on that right-hand side is really good. And for me, you look at... Uh, this Blackpool side and I just I just do wonder where are the opportunities going to come from I do think they have some good players I like Carey uh, I like Coulson husband um, and obviously Fletcher could be something but they haven't quite hit the right level yet and they've still got a long way to go in this season and ultimately this result is probably a bit of a kick in the teeth especially when you look at the numbers now the big one to look at is shots on target. Stockport had five, Blackpool had none. And then if we do just scroll down a little bit more, you can already see it in the uh, picture above. But if you look at shots inside the box, it's seven shots inside the box to four. And for me, it's shots inside the box that is the most important thing to score goals. Yes, you can score from outside the box, but the most important thing to score goals is getting in front of the goal and... That's what Stockport did in this game. Two of their shots uh, that they scored came inside the box. The other one was just on the edge. And I think they are going to develop into a really good side, Stockport. I think Blackpool may be a little bit worried heading into their future games. And Crawley Town pick up a second win of the season. A 1-0 over Cambridge United. And I do think that we're starting to see this Crawley Town side really progress into what is a very important team in this division. A lot of people counted them out this season and I will not say that I wasn't one of them because in my predictions they probably, I believe they were at the bottom and they lost a lot of players and I wasn't quite sure with their replacements but it looks as if they've done a really good job with that and 
They've picked up two results in their opening two games. Obviously, they've obviously got 44 games to go. You can start well and finish badly, and then you end up down. That's just how this league is. But they took their chance. They took their opportunity. But I think we can see within the numbers of this game that it probably wasn't deserved. Now, 39% possession for Cambridge to 61% for Crawley. Now, I do think that... Uh, Cambridge are one of those teams a bit like I've said a few times in previous videos that will give up possession and let you play and let you have the ball and hit you on the counter and I think that shows in the numbers really because the 1.49 xg with 14 shots and four big chances really shows that Cambridge were able to make the most of their opportunities on the ball but they just weren't able to put the ball in the back of the net you look at the 61 percent possession with 0.67 for crawley with 11 total shots and only two big chances now they did the important thing which was take a chance and it happened in the 86th minute and it was uh, an opportunity which they took they had to take it and you look at the two different teams and you don't necessarily look at either of these two teams and think are oh, magnificent and that's something which you don't really look at these teams and think, oh, where are the goals coming from? Now, I really like Corey Smith in the middle of the park for Cambridge. Obviously, came from Derby County at the end of the season. Um, and it's just one of those for me where I just don't think... I think both of these sides will end up down the bottom come uh, May. Um, will they both go down? I'm not entirely sure. But obviously, we look at it right now and Cambridge have struggled. Um, and... Um, Ade, Ademo has picked up his goal, uh, Scott Lindsay has picked up another win, Gary Monk another loss and we're just going to have to see how obviously this one uh, progresses because I'm really shocked, I thought, I, I knew this game was going to be a tight one uh, between Cambridge and Crawley, I thought Cambridge would come out on top um, but Crawley Town have done their job and picked up a 1-0 win in League One again. Huddersfield Town pick up another victory and it is a really good one. A 2-1 win over Stevenage. Alex Revel wasn't able to pick up a second win in League One. But we do have a lot to talk about in this one. I think Huddersfield Town have done really, really well. And looking at some of Stevenage fans, they said the biggest thing that to take from the game is that they were well in the game. But they just couldn't score. And... That's an important thing for me because if you're able to stay in these games and not take your chances, that's where you have your problems. But if we do look at the numbers, it's 62% possession to 38, which for me isn't isn't unexpected when you're looking at a Stevenage game. They don't necessarily like to have the ball. They like to hit you on the break with sort of percentage style plays. And I think that's what obviously they didn't do today they didn't take those percentage chances and yes they scored a goal late on a penalty from Harvey White but it's one of those which you want a little bit more from open play now 62% possession for Huddersfield expected very very good side and they're going to be probably one of the best football sides in this division and they've got a really good league one manager and they're obviously developing as the season goes on 1.37 xg over 15 shots both teams two big chances now if we look at the lineups there is a bit of a disparity as you can expect from a team that's been in the championship compared to one that's only been in league one for one season uh, after being in league two for a while so you look at sort of the back line like Heilick, I'd take it Derby, I'd take uh, Wiles, probably Evans, Sorensen, I'd have all of them. And Danny Ward is a decent championship striker. He's maybe not the level he used to be, but he's fairly decent. And you look at the team available for, obviously, Stevenage, and it's not necessarily the greatest team in the world. Obviously, they are trying to develop that as the season progresses, but it's just one of those where Stevenage aren't going to win this game. They like you look at it and you never put Stevenage as the team to win the game. Just showing you the substitutes there, um, and if we then go and look into like a little bit more of the data side of things, and obviously XG here is a little bit distorted by the penalty, uh, which if we go down here, non-penalty XG 0.66. So they didn't necessarily create anything great, Stevenage, and realistically, if they could create decent chances. In games like this, they probably get a point. But I think you have to credit Huddersfield Town and what they can do and how good they are in these games because Huddersfield Town are a very good side. And 
Yes, they got relegated from the Championship last season, but they were in the Premier League not that long ago. And yes, a lot has changed since then. And obviously this season is a bit of a smash the reset button for them, but they are a decent side. And Stevenage fans can't forget that when looking into this game. Barnsley pick up a win here with a 2-1 win over Lincoln City at Lincoln City's ground as well. Cosgrove and Roberts picking up the goals in the 13th and 47th minute. Lincoln City scared Barnsley with a little bit of a comeback late on, but ultimately weren't able to seal the deal with only one goal being scored from House in the 70th minute. Now, if we do look at the numbers and data behind this game, what a surprise. Barnsley were not great at all. But they picked up their opportunities. They scored their goals. And Lincoln City didn't. And that's the conversation that's going to be had this season across a lot of teams, I think. And if we look at the lineups a little bit here, obviously, Lincoln City have lost a lot uh, this summer. Um, Sorensen's moved on. They've lost Taylor up front. It's really difficult to see them competing on the same level that they did last season with the same level because they've lost some really high quality players. And you, you look at this Barnsley side and it's not necessarily the best side in the world. It's not necessarily the worst side in the world, but it's a capable League One side. And obviously, if you look at the players that they can bring in off the bench, obviously no Conor Horahan uh, involved. But you look at someone like Conor Horahan being a, being involved available you look at Jonathan Russell you look at Aidan Marsh they do have good players and obviously um, Lincoln City have good players as well but I think this Barnsley side is just that little bit ahead of them at, at the minute despite obviously everything that's happened in recent years um, and you look at sort of the opportunities for both sides both opportunities and goals for Barnsley coming from inside the box now Lincoln had more shots on target than Barnsley had shots in the game and this is where my problem becomes you've got to do better if you get the opportunity to put it on goal. 1.24 XG from 14 shots doesn't really seem a great deal to me. And Barnsley scoring twice off 0.35 XG also isn't great to sort of look at in a defensive standpoint. So it's one of those for me where it was a an uneven game across the course of it where Lincoln City were the better side. They just weren't able to put their chances away. And it reminds me of Lincoln City pre-Christmas last year, where they couldn't hit a barn door. They were really struggling. And then they just flipped the script. And it'll be interesting to see if that happens again this season. If you have got this far, you might as well hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned for all of my latest Derby County and EFL Championship and League One content heading your way across the course of the season. My Championship review uh, might be already out or this one might have come out first, but that will be out or coming out in the near future. We've also got a lot of uh, previews coming out as well over the course of the season. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to stay tuned for all of my latest content. Mansfield Town 3, Burton Albion 3. Nigel Clough taking a late, late draw, a late, late point from Burton Albion uh, at the One Call Stadium. And I think this season for Burton Albion is certainly not going to be as good as I anticipated. And it's not necessarily that they're not good enough. They've just got a lot of players that need to bed in and need to sort of find their way within the squad. And obviously we're seeing that already. Obviously, Billy Bowden has been excellent for them so far. Uh, and if we do look at the numbers, I think Mansfield are probably... Now, we will look a little bit deeper into the XGs with penalties and things like that, but Mansfield looked a bit like the better side for me. And... Uh, obviously, 3.11 to 1.27 XG, 18 shots to 22, 55% possession to 45. It's a really sort of interesting one for me. Now, obviously, if we go and look at both sides, I think you can't dispel the impressive nature of Lee Gregory, who is a real goal scorer at this level. And I know it came from the penalty spot, but He's just a real good goal scorer at this level. There's obviously a long way for this Mansfield Town side to go. They'll probably bring in another couple of loans before the transfer window is out. But obviously, we've not hit that point yet. But if we look at this uh, Burton side, you look at Bowden's putting a brilliant performance. Uh, uh, Orsi, Whitfield, brilliant performances from them. And I personally think they're still trying to find their feet. Obviously, uh, Dylan Williams coming off the bench and young, impressive talent who's coming through. Uh, you look at 
still bringing on Mason Bennett. And that just shows that Burton Albion is still building this squad. Now, if we look a little bit deeper at the stats, we're going to go straight to the XG because non-penalty XG is 2.33 to 1.27, which for me still isn't great. You can obviously see all the shot data as well on there and all the other XG statistics. But for me, I think you've got to look at this Burton Albion side and they've got to be creating much better chances from 27 shots. And Yes, they scored one from outside the box, two from inside the box, and had a lot of chances in that area. But look at Mansfield. They had 18 shots, and only two of them were outside the area. And for me, that is exactly what you want from your team. And I think uh, I think Nigel Clough will be delighted with his team's performance. And despite the fact they conceded three goals, I think it was an excellent, excellent performance by Mansfield, and one which will certainly help them grow throughout the season. Northampton Town then get off the mark with a 2-1 win versus Exeter City in what was a good game for Northampton. Now, I said last year they quietly went about their business, finished around mid-table and did a decent job. And they need a little bit more this season, otherwise they could get dragged into that sort of bottom half, maybe potentially relegation battle. Now, I think they've done fairly decently so far this year and not quite got the rewards that they maybe deserve. Um, but today they certainly took their opportunity. Morton and McKeon picking up their goals 65 and 77 after being down uh, for nearly 60 minutes in this game after a Crema 8th minute uh, goal. But you look at the numbers and it's 40% to 60%. So Exeter City had more of the ball. And for me, I think this seems to be a popular theme across this weekend that the teams that are sort of dominating the ball aren't necessarily winning the games. Um and I think that's really important to see. And it's something which should be taken notice of this season. Now, 1.74 XG off 40% possession and 15 shots is brilliant for Northampton Town. 1.29 off 15 shots for um, Exeter. Now, if we look at the two sides, obviously, uh, this Northampton side is fairly decent. Now, I imagine... Uh, I imagine this Northampton side will find a way to progress and sort of become sort of a solid, stable, mid-table League One side over the course of the season. But this result was massive for them and it was really important to get a couple of goals on the board as well to show that they know what they're doing in that department. Because then you, if you still struggle in a few games in, fans start to get a little bit restless and a little bit toxic. It happens everywhere across the country, whether you be Manchester City or... Uh, Luton Town or uh, Macclesfield Town if you're not performing and you look like you're struggling it's just what happens over the course of the season but both of these sides have uh, players who at this level are fairly competitive and it was a fairly even game really uh, they put in fairly decent chances both sides and were really good at getting uh, shots off in the right areas now Northampton Town had more from outside the box compared to Exeter but it's just one of those for me where Again, it is about getting the right opportunities and Northampton took theirs, Exeter didn't and that is what led to this 2-1 result. The points deduction derby from Reading and Wickham ended, Wickham? Wigan ended with a Reading 2-0 win. Now, Reading have recently been taken over by former Wickham Wanderers owner. That's why I said it because it's on my head. Uh, a really, really good performance from Reading. Uh, an early goal from Charlie Savage, a player who I've been, I've really liked for a while. Charlie Savage. I'm really, I hoped that we'd sign him in the January window, but and a deal didn't come to fruition. And I think we're now at the point where we're a little bit more advanced than where he probably is at this point in his career, which means we probably won't end up with him. And it's. Another goal for the striker with a name that I'm not even going to try and pronounce. Uh, a really, really good performance from uh, Reading Wigan. Not really creating anything of note in this game. With only 0.17 XG. Did have more of the ball, but only slightly. So, can't really say they were dominant in that sense. And 2.26 XG for Reading. 22 shots. Five big chances in that as well. And if you look at the lineup. So I, I really like this Reading team. You look at uh, Sam Smith, you look at Lewis Wing, Charlie Savage, uh, Elliot as well. And I think they've got some really, really good players in uh, their squad at Reading. And I think Ruben Sellers is 
slowly building a fairly good team. Now, if they can get some players in now they've got a new owner, it could really, really help their season. And I do think they could potentially make a playoff push. Now, yes, it's early. There's obviously a long way still to go. And I do think that is a potential possibility if they are in a position to bring players in now with this new owner. Now, this Wigan Athletic side has obviously lost uh, Hughes in the recent week. Um, and obviously, I, there's, I don't really know what to say about Wigan. They're one of those teams where it's quite obvious they need more. And I just don't know where their more is going to come from. And this is something which needs to be addressed by Sean Maloney. I think as Wigan fans, they'd probably admit the same, that they're just missing a little bit of quality. And Hugh Gill may come good eventually, but he's not quite there yet. And it's one of those where maybe it's a case of giving it time, but... Right now, they've not yet hit the level that I'd anticipate from them. And we'll just have to see what happens with them as the season progresses. Now, obviously, we've looked at the initial statistics already. But 2.26 XG to 0.17 just shows everything um, that I was saying previously about Wigan. I think they just need a bit more. Whether that be a bit more creativity for Hugh Gill to find his feet or whether it's a better striker to sort of take the little opportunities they get. That's something which obviously needs to be addressed by Sean Maloney in the transfer window. You can obviously let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say. Rotherham United with a nil-nil draw uh, from Bristol Rovers. And it was an interesting one, this one, because Steve Evans and uh, Matt Taylor go head-to-head. Steve Evans, the current manager of Rotherham, Matt Taylor, the former manager of Rotherham. And really, if we look at it, Rotherham were probably the better side in this game. 20 chances, 5 big chances, uh, 2.23 XG to 0.49. And obviously, if you look at the match momentum, were by far the more dominant force across the entirety of the game. But they just couldn't take a chance. And They've got some really good League One strikers in uh, Clark Harris and Nombi and like obviously Powell scored some goals from midfield in his career and I just don't quite understand what's going on with Rotherham. They've not yet found their feet and Bristol Rovers also do obviously need to score at some point and like realistically they'll take a point from this game but obviously looking at the numbers it's not exactly anything spectacular for Bristol Rovers and Will they survive this season? Probably, but I don't think it'll be for um, because they're really good. I think it'll be because they're better than the other teams below um, over the course of a season. I think, obviously, you look at the chances they're giving away, all in the box, pretty much. But if you're able to stop them going in, that's the important part, isn't it? So I do think Rotherham obviously have a lot of progression to do under Steve Evans. They're not quite the team that I anticipated they'd be coming into this season as I predicted them to go straight back up. But right now, it's not looking as if that is going to happen. Now, Wickham Wanderers will be disappointed with this because they took a lead through a Bielik home goal. And then they end up, about 10 minutes later, conceding to Elfie May. You, you can't let Elfie May get chances in this division. I don't care what team you are. I don't care. Realistically, you can't really give Elfie May chances at all because he is a bagsman. He knows where the back of the net is. And Elfie May picking up that goal at about 10, 15 minutes before half time really sort of twisted this game in Birmingham's favour. Now, I'm not going to say it was Wickham's game to start with, but Birmingham City, obviously... If you give them an opportunity, they're going to take it. And it just shows here when you look at the domination in performance and 74% to 26%. But as I've said previously, this weekend, having possession hasn't really meant you win the game. Um, and obviously 0.53 XG for Wickham, 1.45 for Birmingham. It's not really a lot when you think about it for Birmingham, but they didn't necessarily create anything massive. And... Only 13 chances, three big ones, in 74% possession isn't great. Now, if we do go on to look at the lineups, and you can see a clear disparity in quality and cost, really, from the squad. And obviously, Bielik will be disappointed with his own goal, but that that will obviously progress as the season goes on. There's obviously a lot to go on for uh, Birmingham. They have a really good squad already. I think I was talking with someone in the comments about this game, and 
uh, not this particular game, but Birmingham City. And it really is a case of because of the new bodies in the squad and the changes that they've made, that it's going to take time for them to be as good as they will be. I think maybe October, November, but if they can keep themselves sort of within the top half of the division, which I think they will easily do, they'll they'll be well within a shot of automatic promotion. So it's one of those for me where Birmingham can play badly, pick up results, and that's what they need to do to get automatic promotion again. I'm just going to show you these stats. I don't really think there's a great deal uh, to talk through here because Birmingham City, we know we're the dominant side in this game in sort of every single area. And that's sort of the important thing for Birmingham City is they've got to be the dominant force in games. And obviously, you don't look at this Birmingham... This Birmingham City side had a much better start to League One and a much better groundwork to League One than a lot of teams that have been relegated over recent years. And obviously, you go back to Wigan and Reading, came down and had points deductions. You look at Derby, came down with five players, two of which then left. So, starting a pre-season with three players, they ended up... Uh, stopping pre-season for a week and coming back a week later because you can't do pre-season with three players so Birmingham City have been in a great position um, and I do think they'll go back up this year I think if they don't it's a massive failure on their part and I think this result just shows how good they can be now Bolton Wanderers and Ian Everett will have wanted a lot more from this with a 0-0 draw versus Wrexham at home now they were quite clearly the dominant force in this game, but Wrexham found a way. They found a way to pick up a point, and they've came away with a point. Some obviously really good defensive work in this game from uh, Wrexham to make sure that Bolton Wanderers don't really have any sort of major chances that is going to end up directly in a goal. Didn't give them anything, if that makes sense. Now, Bolton Wanderers had chances within the game. Of course they did. And the 1.66 XG shows that. But I think, again, it shows an Ian Everett team being unable to be clinical and take their chances. We saw it last year, and it is what cost them automatic promotion. In my opinion, it's what cost them uh, in the playoffs. And for me, it's one of those things. You look at this uh, Bolton Wanderers side, and it is really, really good. Uh, the addition of McAtee, I think, is a really good signing. I'd have had him at Derby as an extra option. Uh, obviously, Charles and Collins up front are really good players as well. But you look at this um, Wrexham side, Jack Marriott up front, Palmer, Dobson in the middle. You look at the likes of uh, O'Connell and O'Connor at the back, McLean. Like They have some really good players. Oconquo making some big, big saves in this one. You look at the bench as well, bringing on the likes of George Evans, uh, Ollie Rathbone, Steve Fletcher. And then uh, you've got Bolton who bring on Victor Adebagio, Kyle Dempsey, Scott Arfield, and some really, really good talent for both sides. And I'm not shocked that Wrexham got a, a draw out of this. I'm just going to show you the stats as I talk through a little bit about the game. I'm not shocked about Wrexham getting a draw out of this because I do think they're a side who pick up really, really good results as seasons progress. But the big question is going to be how often can they give up chances like this and opportunities like this and not get punished? Now, obviously, over the course of the season, there's going to be teams where Wrexham are going to be the better, better team in the game. But that hasn't happened in this one. And obviously, if we just scroll down a little bit more through the passes and defensive stuff, you can sort of see a little bit more of why Bolton were the better side. And I think Wrexham have done really, really well in this game to pick up a draw. It certainly is one where Bolton would have said, we should have won this game. There is obviously a lot of progression still to come for Bolton Wanderers and both Wrexham, as well as a lot of teams in this division. I don't expect Rotherham to draw all 46 games this season, so we're certainly going to see them win some and probably win big at times this campaign. There's a long way still to go, and make sure you're here for the ride by hitting that subscribe button and turning on that notification bell. Make sure you hit the like button and let me know your thoughts of your performance down in the comments and i'll catch you in my next video be sure to go and find me on tiktok pictured here and twitter pictured here these are the places where i'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the formula one and football weekend